Whose mind is it anyway? Get out of your head and into your life. Lisa and Franco A. Sile. Hi. Maybe you're reading this book because you like books about the mind. Or because you like to read 100 books a year and you heard this was a short one. Maybe your life is going really well and you're at a friend's place and you found this in their reading room. Or maybe you're having one of those OMG stomach lurching are you kidding me moments and you haven't left the house in days and you're out of clean undies and food. Or maybe you're so in the poo you're looking back at one of those OMG moments like they were the good old days. There's something you should know. Feeling unhappy and out of sorts is a sure sign you've been hoodwinked by your mind. Really? Yes. It's also the perfect time for learning stuff that'll make your life better than ever. Because there are things our mind is good at and things it's not. And knowing which is which can make life a whole lot easier. A few words about this book. There's no homework. This book shows you how to see you're already okay by looking at things in a different way. So you don't really have to do anything. We didn't make this stuff up. For thousands of years, people have written about how this whole being human thing works, often with less pictures and jokes, and usually a lot more words. This book boils down universal truths into usable, easy to grasp nuggets. It reveals seven common but unhelpful beliefs that keep us from feeling okay. So without further ado, here are seven ways your mind tricks you out of feeling peaceful and what you can do about it. Whose mind is it anyway? Get out of your head and into your life. Chapter one, wisdom. Your mind thinks I am so wise. Book of wise. When really, Your mind isn't wise at all. From an early age, we're taught, listen to your mind above all else. Reason and logic are the way to get ahead. Do all you can to strengthen your mind. We crown our mind king of all our decisions. We, like, um, totally love the idea of how brainy we are with our opposable thumbs, toilets that self-flush, and telephones that tell you the song on the radio, our mind thinks it's the biggest brain box in the world. We think we are our mind, which our mind really likes. But our mind isn't the only thing that helps us make sense of the world. We also have our heart. Yes, but my mind is the smartest bit, right? Awkward pause. Your mind might have convinced you it's super smart and brainy and knows everything there is to know about everything. But compared to your heart, your mind isn't wise at all. You don't even have to read this book. I already know all this stuff. Your mind computes like a computer. It judges everything. It assumes and oversimplifies. It constantly scans the past looking for patterns to help predict the future. And while computers can do amazing things, they're not wise. So if the mind's not wise, where does wisdom come from? Your wisdom lies within your heart. Your heart is your intuitive voice. We all have it, and it isn't magic. Your intuition isn't based on logic, and often doesn't make sense at the time. It's more an inkling, a vague hunch, a flash of inspiration. Think of it as a different kind of intelligence that comes from deep within and is connected to everything. 
but I've got a double degree, and I'm uncommonly good at puzzles. Are you sure my mind isn't wise? Nope, it's still just a computer. Chapter 2. Calm. Your mind thinks, I'll feel calm when I get a promotion, buy a house, and climb Mount Salvation. When really... Want to know the truth about feeling calm? Yes. Are you sure? Really sure? Because your mind probably won't like it. Okay, you asked for it. You are already calm. You already have all the calm, relaxed, self-assured feelings you're looking for. The same feelings you think you'd feel if things were different. When I master downward facing dog, find a new boyfriend, buy a better houseboat, dust under the bed. When you don't feel calm, it's because you've got a bunch of stuff on top of your calm distracting you from it. That stuff is your mind. Okay, this is hard to hear sometimes, and the kind of thing that makes you want to punch the person who says it. But at the risk of bearing one of your thought punches, feeling stressed is a choice. Blammo! Whether you're in the curled in a ball stage or you're just wandering around feeling dissatisfied, resentful, afraid, and unsure of yourself, the cause is the same. Too much listening to your fraidy cat overanalyzing, assumption making, judgmental puddleweed of a mind. You are calm, contented, and self assured. You love yourself, even if your mind doesn't know it. Please, please don't go judging how you feel or trying to be something else. It's really more helpful just to notice and let it be. Okay, but my thoughts can be so overwhelming. I'd really like to stop the horrible ones. The great grape trick. Imagine a bunch of grapes sitting on your head. They are your thoughts. When you're aware that thoughts are things that go through you but are not you, you create space. When there is space between you and your thoughts, it's easy to see them for what they are, just thoughts, coming and going through your mind. Trying to control our thoughts is like lassoing a bucking bronco made of grape jelly. It's slippery. Sure, we can learn to control them somewhat through meditation or white-knuckle determination, but that's missing the point. Thoughts roll in from who knows where. They roll out again. Imagine your mind is a freight train with a thousand cars filled with thoughts. Imagine standing on a railway track trying to stop that train. Now imagine yourself on top of a hill. Your thought train is still rumbling away, only you're looking up at the sky. From afar, comfy thoughts look the same as non-comfy ones. It can be hard to remember that we're not our thoughts. Keep reading. You'll see it doesn't even matter if you forget. And remember, you are calm. Your mind might not be. Now on to the third trick our mind plays. This one is so subversive they might not even print this part. If you see blacked out areas like this, you'll know why. Chapter 3. Control. Your mind thinks, I am so carefree and easygoing. When really, your mind wants to control everything. Really? Yes. Your mind thinks it needs to control you to keep you safe from lions and flying spears. 
and from regrettable footwear choices. In the name of safety and caution, your mind will limit you and keep you from new experiences. It'll have you sticking with the pack when you'd rather do your own thing. Focusing so much on the approval of others, you forget you even have your own thing. Avoiding unknown situations. Ordering the grilled cheese every time. Left unchecked, your mind will take as much control as you let it. It can rob you of your dreams and visions. Your mind tries to control you and everyone around you. I can't go to yoga with this tummy. The only way I'm going to be successful is if I study business or tech. You have to come to the party. Everybody will be there. Just don't wear orange. Trying to control the world is tiring. It takes a lot of effort. Not to mention it's not possible. And you become harder to connect with. You'd have such a good time. Everyone loves your jokes. Wear your blue dress. It's stunning. Newsflash. Extra, extra. Everyone has their own rhythm, their own intuitions and impulses. No matter how much you think you know what's best for other people, you don't. We have all kinds of justifications for being controlling. But ultimately, we're concerned about the outcome for ourselves. At least our mind is. But I have no one else to go with. She has to come with me. It's what best friends do. I'd go with her. You don't have to spend your life at the mercy of your overbearing, dream-robbing, control freak of a mind. You are actually in charge. I mean, whose mind is it anyway? To be in charge isn't about trying to control your mind. It's about seeing your thoughts for what they are and not being pushed around by them. It's about trust. Trust that you can handle whatever happens. Trust that things will work out. The more you do it, the easier it gets. And you begin to see how your rules aren't always the best. Remember how the mind isn't wise? The more we blindly follow our mind's controlling ways, the less in touch with ourselves we are the less we hear our heart, and we miss the flow of life. The sun shining, people laughing, all the cool and natural ways people do things, ways you've never even thought of. Knowing about your mind's controlling ways is a good start. Play with them. Challenge them. Your mind says you can't go to the gym until you lose weight. What happens if you do? Your girlfriend says you're too old to be a DJ. What happens if you go for it? You're nervous about going to the party alone. Try it and see. Your mind says quitting medicine to ride a unicycle in the circus, even though you want to more than anything, is ridiculous. What happens if you do it anyway? Chapter 4. Learning. Your mind thinks, I love, love learning. When really... Your mind absolutely, completely does not want to learn. You're kidding, right? Nope, that's why we wrote it so big. Learning involves change, and change is unpredictable, which can be terrifying for the mind. Your mind will do everything to convince you not to change. It will tell you things like, I'm too old to change, I'm too young to change, but I've always been this way. People will laugh at me. Things aren't that bad. It's okay, really. Your mind would rather be uncomfortable in a familiar situation than risk something new. I love cheese toast, but I've never eaten off a truck before. Get the picture? Your mind wants predictability. Your mind hates surprises. Your mind hates to learn. The need for predictability is why people repeat old habits over and over again even though they might be painful. The need for predictability is why people repeat old habits over and over again even though they might be painful. 
painful, huh? When you try something new, don't be surprised if your mind is reluctant. Expect it to be. But what about all the studying I've done, all the books I've read? Studying and remembering facts isn't the kind of learning where you take on a new belief, which is exactly the type of learning required for actual change. Your mind loves new information, but it's only interested in the kind that supports its existing set of beliefs. I love what I already know. I love what I already know. I love what I already know. As we grow, we form beliefs about what we can and can't do, based on what teachers tell us, on what our family says, and on how we think we compare to others. We wind up thinking, I'm just not creative. I'm such a slow reader, there's no point. I'm too uncoordinated for tennis. I'm not good at relationships. I'm tone deaf. I absolutely can't sing. These ideas become so much a part of us, we think they are the truth. But they're not. Yeah, but you don't understand. I actually cannot sing. We're belief blind. It's like being colorblind, but for beliefs. Our ability is sitting right in front of us. We just can't see it. Take singing. Lots of people believe they can't sing, but almost everyone can find pitch and hold a note if they're shown how. People often say they're tone deaf when they haven't really tried. You can sing. It's the same with any new belief. They're hard to see sometimes. What are you doing? Writing down what some of my limiting beliefs might be so I can figure them out. Don't do that! Well, you can if you want to, but it's more simple than that. Start noticing how quick your mind is to reject new ideas. The next time you get an urge to instantly disagree or say, I can't, pause. Put it in your ponder ball. This is a ponder ball. Place new ideas in here. You don't need to think them through. Just let them roll around. See how they look in a few days or weeks. Ask yourself, is this really true? The ponder ball is especially good for ideas that make you angry. Angry making ideas can help us. They have a way of showing us where we might be stuck. Pay attention to deep desires. Don't worry if you'll be good. Just do it. Take a small step. If your mind says you're being silly or that you're going to embarrass yourself, go for it. You're probably onto something. 